Hi everyone, this is Adam. Welcome back. In the last video, we created this chart where we select a metric and a date range and we kind of say what, what we want to include and we get the athlete's data over that date range for the athlete that we pick up here. And in this video, we're going to calculate team average, position average, and the athlete's average so that we can display a line on this chart. And we're also going to pick what we want to display. So we're going to calculate all three of those averages because it's important to learn how to do that. And then we're going to give ourselves the option to select do we want to display the team average, the position average, or player average on the fly. So let's go to our chart data area, which is where all this data lives. Here we have a unique list of dates for the athlete. And here we have the metric or the data for the metric that we pick that aligns for those dates. Now let's start calculating the team average. To do that, we're going to do something very similar to what we did in our athlete calculation for the dates. We're going to use average ifs. Go equals average ifs, open parenthesis. Now, what do we want to get the average of? Well, just like in the last video, we're going to use index, open parenthesis, and type in testing data, which is a named range that we created for our data set that includes all of our data. And if you haven't seen the named range video, uh, you will need to know how to do that, and you need to do that, at least to follow along with this. If you don't have a named range and you have not created one, the alternative is you can go into the testing data and select column A all the way through the end, column DB, and you will get the same thing instead of having this testing data here. So we'll go index, comma, we don't care about the row because we're going to determine the row with the rest of our average ifs criteria, comma. Now what column do we want to get the data from? So right now we know we want to get the average of something in our data set. And to tell it the column that we want to get the data from, we're going to use a function called match, open parenthesis. And we're going to match what we select as our metric in our dashboard, comma, to all of our, all of our headers in our testing data set. And we created another named range called testing headers, which is just row one of our data set. So you could select row one in your data set, and it'll do the same thing as selecting testing headers here, comma zero, and close the parentheses. All that means is that it's going to be an exact match. So now we, what we've said is we want to get the average of something in the data set, and that something is going to match the header in our data set to what we pick on our dashboard. So at, at this point, it's body weight. What we're saying now is we want to get the average of all the body weights. And if we change our metric to CMJ, we'll be saying we want to get the average of all the CMJs or whatever the, the metric is that we pick. But we don't just want the average. We want the average for the team that this athlete that we picked is on. So to do that, we can do a comma in our formula. And notice now we're in the criteria range one. And the range or criteria range one is going to be the team in our database. And criterion one is going to be the team that the athlete is on. So we want to get the average of all the body weights for the team that the athlete is on. And we'll go to our testing data and select the team, which is in column D. That's criteria range one, comma. Now, what is criterion one? It's the team that the athlete is on, which in the last video, if we go back to our chart data, we put that right here. So when we pick the athlete, this team changes and we can select that cell because it'll change when we uh, change our athlete that we pick. And let's just lock these in with dollar signs so that if we were to copy and paste this formula around, it wouldn't move. We'll lock in the AA and the 10, and we can close the parentheses and click enter. Now what we have is we have the team average body weight, or we have the average body weight for the two and squad team. And that's great. However, there are a couple of other things that we might want to consider. For example, in the dashboard, we select a date range. So if you just want the team average in between the date range that you pick, you're going to add some other average ifs criteria. Right now we have one piece of criteria, which is when the team is equal to the athlete's team, and we can add some more by adding another comma. Now we go to, to criteria range two. 
And I should mention that this might be fine as is for you. You might want the team average for all time. But if you did want it between the dates that you pick, we can add some more criteria here by going back to our testing data and selecting the date column. So now we're saying that we want to get the average body weight when the team in the database is equal to the team of the athlete that we pick and when the dates will go comma one are equal to one comma and also when the dates are equal to one and that's not correct but i want to click enter so we can get back to our page or our chart data page this isn't right right we want to get the average body weight for when uh for the team that the athlete is on for when the date is greater than or equal to the start date that we select not one so we'll do quote greater than or equal to end quote ampersand and here is the start date that we selected in our dashboard so we'll select that cell and then we also want the average when the date or testing data b2b is less than or equal to the end date that we pick to get the average within those two dates so instead of one here We'll go quote less than or equal to end quote ampersand and the end date that we picked. And now let's lock all of this in with dollar sign. So we'll lock in the B's here and we'll lock in the AA13, lock in the B's, lock in the AA14, and click enter. Now we have the team average between two dates or between this date range that we pick. So either is fine. This is, I want to expose you to a couple of different things. So some of the things we do might not line up, but the purpose of this is to show you and give you the tools so that you can think about and contextualize what you're doing and perform the equations the way that you want to. Now we need this to apply for our entire data set. But first, before I forget, we got to lock in this cell too, the AD and the four here because when we copy and paste this down we don't want the metric that we refer to to change and we'll click enter now if we copy this formula and we paste it down to the end of our sheet we're going to get this average appearing even when there is no date remember the end goal is to have the average fill out for all these dates so that we can have an average line next to all of these body weights in our chart so to do that, we need to add an if statement before this average ifs. We're going to say if this date is blank, then we want this to be blank. And if, it, if there is a date there, then let's do this calculation that we just did. To do that, we can go if, open parenthesis, if this cell right here, which is in the same row of this formula, if AC5 equals quote, quote, or blank, comma, well, what do we want to do? We want to make it quote quote or blank comma if the date is not blank or in other words if there's a date there then we want to perform this average ifs formula this big old monster and close the parenthesis before i click enter i just want to lock in the ac before the five so that if i copy this formula across uh, the column that we refer to our dates in will not change and now we can click enter and if we copy this formula, and I'm going to paste it to the bottom of my sheet, scroll up. Now we have the team average for all of our dates. Great. Now we can move on to the position average. The way that we can do that probably quickest is we can copy what we've already done, paste it here next to the position average, and change a couple of things. Now you're gonna again you're gonna have decisions to make with every single one of these things and these are your decisions they're not mine. I'll give you the tools and, and the information that you need hopefully to, to make them but again you might not want the position average between two dates you might want it for all time and I'll talk about another consideration in a little bit. But in general, the way that I would do it to get the position average within this date range is we can add in another piece of criteria to this average ifs. We have one piece of, we have one criteria range here. We got another criteria here and another criteria here. And we can add another one at the end with another comma. So we do a comma. So now we want the average of the body weights when the team is equal to the team, the team in our database is equal to the team that the athlete is on 
and the date is greater than or equal to our start date, and the date is less than or equal to our end date, and when the position, which we'll find in our testing data again, and when the position, comma, is equal to the position of the athlete. So if we go to our chart data, we have the position of the athlete right here. We can select that cell. And let's just lock this in. Oops, I didn't want. Let's lock the lock in the C's and lock in the AA7 and click enter. Now we have the position average. Now this is something for you to consider. First is you may not want the average of the position for this team. For example, you may have five basketball teams and you might want an average of all of the forwards. And if you want that, then all you have to do is remove the team criteria, which is testing data D to D equals A10. So if we remove that, actually let me copy and paste it down so we can see the difference. If we remove this piece of criteria and click enter, they're slightly different. Now we have the average of four words, regardless of the team that the person is on. And if you just wanted the position average without the date range, again, you can just remove the date range criteria, which is all of this stuff. New comma. Now we just want the average of whatever this is, which is body weight because it's the metric we picked, when the position is equal to forward and click enter. And now we have a different average. So there are a couple different ways of going about it. I'm going to use this one, which is the average for the team that the athlete is on and the position that the athlete is. And we can cop in between the two dates that we pick or within our date range. And I'll copy this formula and paste it to the bottom. And there we go, that's the position average. I guess one thing that I should mention here is you might want to get the get the average for each of these dates, right? You might want to get the team average for this date, and that might be different than the team ad average for this date. You might want that to show every time. And if you do that, or if you want to do that, what we can do is I'm going to remove this date range stuff, but keep testing data B to B, which is where our dates are. And right now where we're at is we're saying we want to get the average body weight when the when the team is equal to this team, which is the team that the athlete's on, and the date is equal to, and we can select this date just like we did with the athlete's numbers, and click enter. And now we have the average for that date. And if we copy this formula and paste it here, we might get a different average for a different date and a different average for a different date. But I just wanted to review that so that you know how to do it. And I'm going to undo this because I just want the team average. I want one line across and just to see whether the athlete is above or below that line. Next up, and you're going to have similar decisions to make here, is the athlete average. So what we can do here is we can probably copying our team average is the easiest one. So we can copy it and paste it to the player average. And now we just have to change one thing, assuming that we still want the player average within the date range that we pick. We need to change this piece of criteria from being getting the average of the team that the player is on or the athlete is on to getting the average for the athlete that we pick. So let's remove this stuff because we don't need the team anymore. And click enter. And what we have now is we have the average body weight between these two dates that we picked, regardless of the team, regardless of the athlete, regardless of the position. But to do it for the athlete that we pick, we can add a comma after our last piece of criteria and add another one. So our criteria range three will be in our testing data. We'll select the athletes, testing data A to A, comma, and it needs to be equal to, go to our chart data and select the athlete that we picked in our dashboard. And maybe we lock this in with some dollar signs and click enter. And now we have the athlete's average between the dates that we picked. And again, if we wanted to do, I'll copy this and paste it down. If we wanted the athlete's all-time average, we could remove all of this date stuff 
where we see the greater than or equal to and less than or equal to, and testing data B to B. And we can do a comma and click enter. Now this is the athlete's all time average. But what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the athlete's average in between those date ranges. So I'm going to copy the formula on top, not this one, and I'll paste it to the bottom of my sheet. And now we have three different averages. We have the player average, the position average, and the team average. The next step is we want to choose between these averages and display them on or and display that on our dashboard. And before we get into that, we're going to have to adjust our dashboard a little bit to give us an opportunity to select what we want. So we go to our testing dashboard. And this is actually why I know I made these headers or these filters look kind of pretty or prettier than just not doing anything. And typically I leave this to the end for reasons like this, where now I'm going to have to try to fit in a compare to thing. So I'm going to unmerge this date range. I'm going to move these dates over. And I don't need this include because I know um, what that is. Maybe I'll remove the borders here. And I'm going to copy what I have in the date range, paste it here, and say this is compare to. And now here, right next to the compare to, I'm going to merge these cells and make it a drop down of things. Now, what things do we want? Well, let's go to our chart data. We could pick these three things to pick from, but I'm gonna name them differently. Um, I'm gonna name them down here. So I'm gonna copy these and paste them here, and I'll call this team average, position average, and player average. Now, these three things are gonna be what make up our dropdown list, and the reason why we need a drop down list is because what we need to pretty much tell Google Sheets to do is say, hey, look in our drop down list and find and, and match it up with one of these things. And that's the data that I want to show in my chart. So let's go to our testing dashboard again. And now we're on the cell that we want to create our drop down list in. We can go to data, data validation, and we'll reject input because we don't want things to break. And we want a list from a range. So let's click on this box here to get our range go to our chart data, and we can select these three things. This way we have control over what this says and what shows up on our dashboard. Click OK and save. Now if we go back to our testing dashboard, we'll see a dropdown of these three things. So I'll select one and maybe I'll bold it and I'll just make it more like uh, all the other stuff. So it's, uh, it has a little gray background, it's gold, and I'll put another put another box around this another border that's gray-ish, and maybe I'll do that too. Okay, now that looks a little bit better. Now we have an opportunity to pick what we want to compare our data to. Now let's go back to our chart data, and let's add something here, right? On this AA column, we have important information about what we picked on our dashboard. So let's copy one of these little headers and I'll paste it down here and I'll call this uh, comparison. And in this cell down here, just like we've done with these or most of them, is we'll have that equal to go to our training dashboard and whatever we pick in our drop down menu and click enter. So now we've brought in what we what we have decided to compare to into this sheet so that we don't have to go back and forth in between sheets and just give us all the general information we need, um, which might help with organization. Now we need to give ourselves the ability to choose from a formula standpoint between uh, these three different averages. I guess I'm going to call this uh, choice. I'm going to call this choice. And I'm just going to center it. And I'm actually going to color it gray and I'm going to color this gray too. Now, what we can do here is we can write a formula called choose. In the previous tutorials where we built that testing 
dashboard for a single event. We use we we use choose a lot. So if you've already gone through this, you'll you'll have a lot of familiar familiarity with this stuff where we use choose and match together. We're going to do that again. So what we're going to do here in AE5, we'll go equals choose open parenthesis. And the first thing that you need to do with choose is you need to pick an index, uh, which is, I mean, it's kind of reverse in the way that you think about it. But essentially what you're doing is you're, is you're telling Google Sheets, I have, these, I have this choice that I want to make, and I'll tell you uh, which choice, that, like I have five choices, and I'll tell you which one of those choices I want. So let's just make the index number two, comma, and now we need to give it our choices or our potential options. And our potential options are, this or the team average comma the position average comma and the player average and we can close the parentheses and click enter and see what's happening here is that we have the index number two so we're getting the second value in those options which is 204.083 because that's the position average if we change the index to three and click enter now we're getting our third option, which is the player average. Now this is pretty cool, but we need this to be dynamic. We can't just type in a number here. We need to use the formula or the function called match so that based on what we pick, it, Google Sheets knows which data to get instead of us typing in a number manually. So we'll go match, open parenthesis, and what do we want to look for? We want to look for what we decided on in our dashboard to compare to, which is in this cell, and we'll lock that in with dollar signs. And where are we going to find that comma? The range is going to be these three, these three headers. And remember, these headers go into your dropdown, which goes into this comparison, so all of this stuff will always line up. And if you want to change the way that things look, you change them in these header cells, and that'll change what it looks like in your dropdown, and that'll change what goes here, and you're matching um, pretty much what you pick to what's in here. So it'll always kind of work out. And let's lock that in with dollar signs for the AF and the four, and the AH and the four, comma zero, because it, it has to be an exact match. And we'll close the parenthesis and click enter. So now, because we have team average selected, we are getting, Pretty much what's happening is choose is saying okay we're looking for team average we found it it's index number one or it's the first of these three options um, or it's sorry it's the first of these three headers so we're going to use option one and if we change in our testing dashboard let's say we change this to position average and go back to our chart data now this value is going to be the position average because it's saying oh this is index number two based on this is one, two, three. So we're getting the second one, which is our second choice. And now we can copy this formula and paste it to the bottom of our sheet and come back up. And there we have it. So now we have this, this average, uh, which is currently the position average. And I know this video is a little bit longer, but I wanna just tackle this whole thing uh, uh, the rest of this chart. So thank you for sticking with me. Let's add these values now to our chart. And actually what we can do here under this choice to give it a header, we'll go equals and whatever we decided on our comparison and click enter. And we'll see what happens. I'll just bold it and I'll make it for all around. We'll see what happens when we add this to our chart. To add this data to our chart, we can go to our testing dashboard, select our chart, the three dots on the top right hand corner and click edit chart and we can add a series Just add a series and select the data range by clicking on that box go to our chart data and we'll select AE4 which is where the values are where we make our choice AE4 colon AE or all the values that go to the bottom of the sheet just like we did with body weight and dates and click OK and now we have an average line. And you're not going to see this, but note just just notice that the average for the position is 204.083. And if we change it to player average, the line you probably didn't see the line change very much, but now it's 203.67 because the values are very close together. 
but essentially we select what we want to compare to and this line will change. Now I'm just going to reformat this line a little bit by clicking on it. Maybe I'll make it gold and uh, the dash type might be this long dash and maybe the uh, the line thickness is, is two points. I don't know. And now we have this average line. And if we pick something else, right, let's say we want to look at CMJ average. Now we still have it, right? We have this line and it's looking at the player's average for CMJ versus um, all of their data points within our date range. And if we change it to position average, we saw the line change a little bit that time. If we change it to team average, we saw the line change a little bit that time. Now, one thing that you might be thinking with this chart is that, number one, there are a lot of decimals in the CMJ average stuff. One thing that we can do with that is we can go to our chart data, select our metric. I'm just going to hold down Control Shift down arrow to get to the bottom of our sheet so that when more data is added, it will also have this formatting. And we're just going to remove decimals. I want to keep two decimals in case I pick a time based metric, like a sprint time, so that two decimals will exist in my chart when I when I make that selection. If I just went to one, then one decimal would exist regardless of which metric I select, which might not be enough information for me for sprint times. And if we go back to our dashboard, now it looks a little bit cleaner. We have two decimals for every one. And one thing that I like to do is I like to see the team average value, like just I like to have it in the chart so that I just know what it is instantly because I can look at these other values and kind of get get a better sense than just looking at, at the chart components. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. So if we go to our chart data, all we have to do is we have to adjust this header, right? So if we, if we can see this, we have CMJ average here and team average here. And when we go to our chart, we have CMJ average here and team average here. It's taking those headers and it's putting them up here with our legend. And we have an opportunity to make these whatever we want to make them. And I'm going to add the value that is the team average to this header. So if we go to our chart data, right now we have this header being equal to AA21. But then we can do an ampersand quote colon space quote ampersand. That's just segregating. Um, pointing to a cell location with some open free text. My free text is just a colon and a space. And then the ampersand is to add another cell reference, which is our team average. And our team average is right here. So if we click enter now, and I'll just open this up, right? It'll look different. I'll undo that. And if we go to our chart, testing dashboard, now we see team average with a colon and, and whatever the average is. Now let's go back to our chart data because that's a lot of decimals. And one thing that we'll notice is that you are not going to be able to change the decimals for displaying in that header by doing this, right? By removing decimal points. Here, let me just expand this out, right? It still has a bunch of decimal points, regardless of what I do. So what you need to do here is you need to use a function called text to format the way that this number looks. You can see how it's formatted right now. If we add this text function on top of it, open parenthesis, here's the number. How do we want to format it? Comma. Well, for us, we'll do two decimals. So we can do quote zero, and that means no decimals. Point, that means at least one. Zero, that's one decimal. And another zero, that's two. And the quote, and close the parenthesis and click enter. Now, if we go back to our testing dashboard, we'll have two decimals for, by our team average. So that's great. I'm happy with this chart. And this is what our chart data looks like. And that is all I have for this video, except I need to tell you something about myself to keep this, uh, this streak going. I want to tell you about my favorite electronics growing up. For me, I had a Game Boy and I loved playing Pokemon when I was really when I was really young. And I, I had the blue one. There, there was this big um, turtle looking fella on it, and that was really fun for me. Eventually, I think I got a Nintendo 64, and that was super exciting because I played my favorite games were like Super Smash Brothers, 
played Mario Kart, Mario Party, and another big one, of course, I loved like NFL Blitz and sports games. So those were kind of my favorite electronics and games growing up. Um, it always gives me nostalgia thinking about this and talking about it with other people. So yeah, leave a comment below with what your favorite electronics and video games were growing up, if you played any of those things or used any of those things. And I'd, I'd love to read them and learn more about you. And uh, I'm sure that well, we could have some interesting discussions about, about what we preferred. But in any case, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you're getting value from the content, please make sure to do that. That would help me a lot, help out the YouTube algorithms, uh, make them understand that this content is valuable for at least a couple of people. So thanks again for watching, and I'm excited to see you again in the next video where we will essentially duplicate what we've done here and create another chart. And you can do this as many times as you want. So again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.